Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Hey yo man, it's your time. And fuck poverty. Get this money, man. What the fuck you gotta do, you know what I'm saying? What's up everybody? Welcome to the Phil and Leroy the Judgmental Podcast. I'm Leroy. Uh, no Philip this week. Now let's get into some news stories. We going to Atlanta, Georgia again. Fulton County Jail. The family of 35-year-old LaShawn Thompson, who died while in custody at the Fulton County Jail, is outraged as they claim he was eaten alive by insects and bed bugs. This Fulton County Jail must be a horrible place. Uh, now we got the uh, CO sleeping with the inmate, the female CO sleeping with the inmate, and we got. Uh, the lady um, beat, beating up the clock, <laughs> lying on her timesheet, saying she was there and when she wasn't. And now we got a man that was eaten alive by bed bugs and other insects. Well, here's the report. Tonight, the family of a man who died at the Fulton County Jail is now demanding action. They say he was essentially eaten alive by insects and bed bugs while in custody. Tracy A. McPierce spoke with him just hours ago. She's joining us now live from the Fulton County Courthouse. Tracy? Well, LaShawn Thompson had been held in the psych wing of the jail for three months when an officer found him unresponsive in his cell. His family tells me by that point, they couldn't even recognize him. He was definitely a heavy set guy, and from those pictures, he looks totally different. He's not the same person. Brad McRae says these pictures of his brother that he shared with us, 35 year old LaShawn Thompson, are hard to look at. His cell at the Fulton County Jail covered in filth, and his body covered in sores and bites from bed bugs and lice. It looked like he wasn't eating. They're uh, showing the picture of, uh, of LaShawn. Um, laying down i guess that the uh, doctors or something was trying to work on them and they took a picture and there's definitely something going on there with uh i guess those are insect bites in jail or malnutrition or maybe the bed bugs did it the fulton county medical examiner report lists his cause of death as undetermined but noted a severe bed bug infestation the family says what <laughs> so it's undetermined how he died but he got bed bugs and sores all over him what do you think? Thompson was brought to the jail on a misdemeanor simple battery charge in June and was put in the psych wing because the jail was aware of his schizophrenia. They are now demanding the jail be closed and law enforcement open a criminal investigation. Now, is there a psych ward at this jail? Because if he was if he was schizophrenic, he should have been in a psych ward and he should have been monitored, correct? He should. So we need a change in the system. The Fulton County Sheriff's Office told 11 Alive its Office of Professional Standards is investigating Thompson's death and will determine if criminal charges are warranted. The agency wouldn't speak to us on camera today, but said in a statement it spent $500,000 to address an infestation of bed bugs, lice, and other vermin after Thompson's death. Oh, afterwards, now you want to spend money to try to uh, repair the, the, <laughs> the infestation of bed bugs and other vermin. So it's, it's, filled with, uh, it's filled with vermin in there, and this guy passed away. Then that's when they want to spend a half a million dollars to try to f correct the situation. <laughs> and updated security rounds to include addressing sanitary conditions. Now the family's attorney tells me they're doing their own investigation to determine if the bug bites caused the infection that killed Thompson. They say if they get that proof, they intend to sue. Very disturbing, Tracy. Thanks for the update. Yeah, I think they should sue because this is totally uh, mismanaging. And first of all, he's if he's a schizophrenic, and they knew he was schizophrenic. He should, if they don't have a psych ward, then he should have been monitored just in just in case. You know, if they don't have a psych ward, he should have been monitored by the COs to see what what was he doing and everything. Because maybe he had a, a, a psychotic breakdown. Maybe that's the reason why he was uh, malnourished, as as his brother said. It could have been malnourished. So, uh, yeah, this is totally mismanagement, and uh, I hope they do sue. <clears throat> that's a sad story there, too. Well, speaking of other mismanagement in the jail, we go on to our hometown, Philadelphia, PA. We got 35-year-old Jose Alberto Flores Horta and 21-year-old Exani Starlin's helped 24-year-old Nasir Grant 
and 18-year-old Amin Hurst escaped from the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Center. So, uh, Jose, who are, Jose was already in the jail, and the uh, young lady, the Rada Jai chick, Exani, she was in jail, and she got out of jail, and uh, she helped help these two guys escape <laughs> escape prison. Now, the guy, uh, Nasir Grant, He's he's uh, been already found and and uh, he's back in jail. So they still. Last I checked, now Na- Naeem Hurst is still on the run. So this first video is the uh, the first person, Exani Starlings, because we didn't know that Jose was involved until uh, maybe at the end of the week. So this first report here is with the young lady. It's about the young lady here. <laughs> Now to developing news here tonight in the ongoing search for two escaped inmates. Philadelphia police tell Action News tonight that a 21 year old woman, Ziani Stallings. And this woman here and she's 21 years old and damn age and life then beat her up. <laughs> so miss me. How are you 22 years old and got bags under your eyes? Boy, this lady, this young lady had a rough life here and I'm not even trying to make fun of her or anything. It's, it's sad has now been arrested, accused of helping the fugitives plot their prison break. The question now, does she know where they are? Action News reporter John Paul live outside that facility in Hallsburg. Uh, John, you've got the latest details tonight. Yeah, and Brian, that's a question. Another question, how did she know these two? You know, we're learning a lot more about Ziani Stalling tonight. And the most revealing, sources are telling us she just got out of this very same prison earlier this year, and now she's accused of helping two men escape. Earlier this year is May, so <laughs> I guess it's still early in the year. So here we go. As the search for Amin Hurst and Nasir Grant drags into a fifth day, police believe they know who helped them get out. 21-year-old Ziani Stalling was arraigned this morning on a number of charges in connection to the prison break. She's accused of somehow communicating with the inmates leading up to the escape. Sources tell us she was an inmate here for an attempted murder charge until February. I have word that she actually did try to visit um, before, but of course she couldn't. She hasn't been out, I believe, six months. David Robinson is the head of the union representing the corrections officers here. He's familiar with Stallings' background and believes she could have met the inmates while behind bars. It's a strong possibility if they didn't know each other on the streets. They would never even met each other if they weren't on the same exact side of the jail. Police say Stalling communicated with Hurst, who's accused of killing for. Well, how was they able to communicate with a female prisoner? See, I believe they knew each other, or she must have knew one of them out out on the street. I don't believe that they uh, just met in jail and all of a sudden. So they met in jail, and all of a sudden she's going to help them try to escape prison. That don't sound right to me. People and Grant, who's being held on gun and drug charges. I asked Robinson how this could have happened. They can get it contraband by cell phone. They have the um, telephone lines inside the institution. Also, they have video tablets. So it's a, ra- a wide range of communication inside these institutions. But aren't the phones monitored here? They should be, yes. They believe she somehow helped the two break out of the Philadelphia Industrial Correction Center on Sunday night. The two managed to slip out of their cells, cut a hole in the fence, and escape. The prison didn't even notice they were gone until Monday afternoon after three head counts. Poor mismanagement. Again, just like Fulton County Jail. Now, Stalling faces a number of charges, including criminal use of communication and escape. As for Hearst and Grant, they have not been seen since Sunday. We're live outside of the Correctional Center. John Paul, Channel 6 Action News. Brian. Okay, now the next report is about, now this is what we found out uh, later in the week about uh, Jose Alberto Flores Horta. He uh, also helped escape, uh, helped those guys, two guys escape. He's currently in jail. Here's that report. Now to the latest in the capture of one of two inmates who cut their way out of a Philadelphia prison five days ago. U.S. Marshals tracked 24-year-old Nastier Grant to Strawberry Mansion last night, taking the disguised fugitive into custody. Tonight, they're still working to find 18-year-old Amin Hurst, who stands accused of four murders. Action News reporter Sharifa Jackson live in Holmesburg tonight. Sharifa, we've now also learned today another person is now linked to this plot. 
Yeah, Brian, sources say that this prisoner allegedly acted as a lookout. He's now another person that is charged with conspiracy and felony escape of these two inmates. Friday afternoon, Philadelphia police announcing new charges against 35-year-old Jose Flores Huerta, already in jail for his alleged role in a deadly beating at Pat Stakes. He's accused of helping Nasir Grant and Amin Hurst escape from the Philadelphia Industrial Correctional Facility. Officers caught up with Grant Thursday night. Our city has a lot to do with that because that facility should be well secured at all times. US yes, it should, ma'am. Marshals tracked him to a home in North Philadelphia, and he was arrested at this Strawberry Mansion shopping center near 28th and Dolphin Street. When he was captured, police say the 24-year-old was dressed head to toe in full female Muslim garb. I believe he was thoroughly surprised. Uh, he submitted to our commands, and it was pretty much an uneventful arrest. Authorities say somebody told on him for their reward. Grant, an 18-year-old, I mean Hurts, were able to get out through a hole in the fence. As investigators work to figure out how this happened, new court documents detail the alleged involvement of a 21-year-old woman. Ziani Stalling was taken into custody Thursday, charged with felony escape, hindering apprehension, and conspiracy. Documents reveal Amin Hurst allegedly made two phone calls to Stalling, planning their escape and making arrangements. During a recorded video conversation with another inmate one day after the escape, Stalling asked if he heard about the inmates leaving and stated, quote, you had an opportunity to run from jail. This was two hours before prison staff. So did she have a conference call with somebody and told them that, that <laughs> about this escape? I swear, these young folks today, they tell everything they know on, well, I can't say social media, but that's what we could say is online. They tell everything they know. They don't keep anything secret. She, she went and had a video call with another prisoner to talk about them uh, helping them escape. <laughs> and, and she fell to realize that all this stuff is recorded. Come on, Dale. Our police knew about the escape. Worried about that, but I'm so glad to hear you said they caught one. Right here uh, in the lot. This is awesome. And task force members say they are working around the clock, 18 hour shifts in order to capture her. Now, if you have any information, again, there's a $25,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest live from Holmesburg. Sharifa Jackson, Channel 6 Action News. Brian. Sharifa, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, young ladies, young men, get off of social media, media and stop telling everybody all your damn business. Come on now. All right, next report, we got a street entrepreneur story. Street entre This is like the third street entrepreneur in a row. Uh, we got street entrepreneurs, get your money, do your thing, and stop hating. Everybody hating on me. I'm going to get it how I live. We going to suburban Springfield, PA, where more victims come forward detailing package theft scheme in Delaware County. Here's the report. Residents are on alert after noticing their packages were being rerouted. Last week, we told you about a thief taking elaborate steps here to steal some packages. And since then, more victims with similar stories have come forward. Action News reporter Becca Hendrickson now with those details. Two more victims have come forward with near identical stories since we reported on the scheme last week. In every case, someone rerouted the victims' packages and stole their new laptops from UPS access points. It's almost the exact same crime. Lauren and Gino thought she was being safe, sending her new Microsoft laptop to the suburbs. Ironically, had it delivered to my parents' house, who live in Delaware County because I didn't want it to get stolen from my residence in Philadelphia. Instead, <laughs> but it wound up getting stolen anyway. <laughs> and she learned on April 26, it had been rerouted to a UPS access point in Michaels in Springfield. And according to staff there, a man picked it up. They said he had some kind of authorization form that with my name on it, that authorized him to pick it up. Springfield Township Police are investigating. Her story is similar to one we detailed on Action News last week, where police say this unknown man walked into Roxborough News Shop, gave the clerk a fake notarized letter and fake IDs, and walked out with that victim's laptop. In both cases, the victim say someone opened a UPS My Choice account in their names to reroute the packages. And in the weeks prior, both had gotten email alerts. There was suspicious activity. Yeah, it's got to be some hacking going on with the account. How would they know all this information about when the package is going to be delivered? It almost kind of seemed like it's an inside job also.
activity on their Microsoft accounts. A third victim says the same thing happened to him in Trap, Pennsylvania in April. You should be concerned. Postal Inspector George Clark says it's vital to pay attention to alerts like this and try to gather as much information as possible. As we do. And also, always make sure you're at home. Um, if you uh, uh, order something expensive like that, okay, she ordered a laptop. She could have had it delivered in Philadelphia, but she should have made sure that she was home that day when they delivered it. Do more and more business online, uh, and more and more of our online inform our information is online. There's a vulnerability there. Lauren says she got messages from UPS and Microsoft saying there's um, nothing they can do for her. I haven't been refunded yet, but my main concern is like my information being out there and um, just like the fact that something like this could happen. We reached out to Microsoft for comment and have not heard back. UPS is encouraging any other victims of fraud to give them a call. In Center City, Becca Hendrickson, Channel 6, Action News. Yeah, make sure you home when you uh, have delivered something expensive like that. But this doesn't sound right. It sounds like either someone like hacked into their account or they or someone had some inside knowledge that they had ordered uh, a, a laptop and and knew how to uh, ways to you know have it rerouted so where they can pick it up. Yeah, that's weird. Well, ladies and gentlemen, on the TV movie front, there has been leaks of the last two episodes of Power. Uh, Phil and I have seen those episodes, and uh, I guess we'll talk about them next week when uh, Philip is back on here. Uh, and a couple of movies I've seen, too. I've, I've seen um, Uncharted, and I've seen the 355. And, and no, I didn't forget about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and so I've seen three movies. And I'll talk about those uh, when Philip is uh, back on. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you can reach the Judgmentals on yeah. Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, and YouTube at PNO Judgmentals, Instagram at the two underscores Judgmentals, or you can email us at pnljudgmentals at gmail.com. All right, everybody, and again, all the women out there, happy Mother's Day. Check the status on my level, not my Facebook. Comments on my photos, that's why I stay on the low low. Most of y'all is associates, so I be on my dolo. Hold up, walk that whoa, hold the phone. You think all I do is rap? I can do it on my own. That's why I produce the track. Don't wonder where my crew is at. They'll be back. Niggas see me walking on the block and look like, who is that? Who is that? People always wanna know where my friends is at, like we attack. I don't need no crew to produce the same effect. How lame is that? Niggas say that.